Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena and today I'm gonna be playing with the most used deck uh, in the game as for now, which is gonna be obviously the default deck. So basically, if you install the Boom Arena and you don't change anything at all and first thing you do will be queuing uh, yourself into a battle, you're gonna be playing the deck uh, that you see from me on the screen. So it's gonna be obviously some a bomb skeleton, bomberman, abomination, which frankly many people play nowadays. So uh, obviously I've played this deck a couple of times already uh, in my video, and my opponent will be Hunter. So uh, he has 1500 mils and is 100% aware of what I'm doing in this video. Uh, the thing I don't know is what he's doing, and yeah, he's gonna be playing general. So that's gonna be uh, good knowledge uh, to have. Uh, because I expected him to actually run a Drunker Loom, and since he's gonna be playing General, I think... Uh, let's just see how the things will turn out to be. He's gonna be playing uh, some uh, General Drunker as well, which obviously is a real composition that I've been playing a lot, even on this YouTube channel, and yeah. Uh, that's why I kinda know the best ways how to counter it. Basically, be patient. If they spell your building, uh, you'll get a counter push. If they spell your troops, uh, you'll pretty much reset the board and uh, everything's gonna be fine. So, I'm gonna go for a Bomb Skeleton. I'm gonna go for a Bomberman as well, just to kill his Super Devil. And right now we should be having a, uh, an offensive momentum. I'm gonna go for a Steel Hammer. Uh, I'm gonna go for a Stone Falls. And then I'm gonna go for a Bone Blaster because I know he's gonna be struggling to defend those. Unless he plays Fond because, frankly, I forgot about the existence of this card. And right now we are in trouble because... Like I've said, I didn't expect for him to play phones, so yeah. Uh, I would say the only advantage of me using this deck is that I pretty much can uh, create a, a positional tension for pretty much free. I can just play uh, a lot of cards that will uh, that will be uh, practically uh, difficult uh, for my opponent uh, to deal with. I'm gonna play a cannon here, just to uh, counter his drunker, and right now he should be starting to make some tricks, because that's how this deck works. Also, yeah, we're gonna get away with pretty clean defense. I'm gonna actually set up a bomb skeleton into his super devil, and if he tries to strike me on the opposite side, which he does, it's the best play, obviously. I'm gonna be willing to just defend the general with the steel hammer, so I'm gonna get a good trade, and like I've said, if you don't defend perfectly, it's counter push time, baby. And uh, right now we get a full on counter push. Uh, I'm okay. He's gonna be actually on point with defense, so we won't be getting uh, uh, any damage here, which is pretty embarrassing. I don't remember if uh, this was a. I think we actually have only uh, 30 seconds left, so. Uh, I'm gonna just play some bullets and that's gonna be pretty much the last attack of the game and we kinda have to succeed here, so let's just focus a bit, he's gonna play some drunker, uh, we're gonna get some bone blasters and hopefully, okay, none of them will connect and uh, yeah, that's gonna be first game very well clutched by a hunter, he knew what he had to do and I kinda miscalculated my chances, I thought that I have to uh, just wait for a bit more, but I didn't have time and he absolutely knew that. Also, one of the reasons why the default deck is bad is that it kinda doesn't have a spells to compete with modern decks. Um, I'm gonna explain the uh, pros and cons of this deck in the next game. Okay, so we're in the next game against Adele uh, with uh, Bomb Skeleton so, and Zero Metals, so I pretty much expect uh, in this game to be to be a mirror matchup, so let's see how it will turn out to be. Uh, so I was about to explain the pros and missile, interesting. Uh, well, I was about to explain the pros and cons of this deck, so pretty much with this deck you have a lot of heavy cards, so it's gonna be very easy for you to create a, a positional tension. And uh, what I mean by that is that uh, usually if you uh, 
play like a cycle deck you basically want to just barely defend just have barely enough mana to defend and then throw out your win condition to deal some guaranteed damage and uh, the, ga the game style of this deck is pretty much different because what you do is you are playing the card which will 100% uh, defend and it's gonna be like overkill but then you can use the same troop to counter push uh, further down the lane and uh, yeah basically Basically, you're gonna be having at some point a lot of units uh, in one place on the board and uh, you'll be having a one big push on which you'll have to capitalize, um, otherwise you'll, um, you'll be just dead, so uh, that's the pretty much difference. I'm gonna be playing against Piercing Archer and Missile deck out of my opponent, which will be very annoying to deal with because he'll be uh, having probably a very tight defense as well. And that's usually not something that I want to see. Uh, oh, but he's gonna be blundering a connection of Bone Blaster, which is definitely not the thing that uh, he wants to see because if I notice correctly, he's gonna be playing a, a missile cycle with some bomb skeleton and a, a digger. A weird deck. I'm gonna give him that. He certainly confused me. And um, yeah, since he is gonna be playing digger and a missile, he's, uh, he'll have to be very cautious about making mistakes because. Like you see, another two Bone Blasters connect, and if this game uh, ends as a one tower game, it's gonna be very uh, bad for him, because uh, coming back with just diggers and missiles will be very difficult. Right now, yeah, this Piercing Archer is barely out of range, which is absolutely phenomenal for me. I'm gonna play some archers just to defend his digger. Right now he thinks he has the momentum, but I can just play this Bomb Skeleton very well timed. And frankly, it's gonna mean that I was never in trouble. I be, I mean, I was kind of in trouble, but at the same time, I was always it under control. And right now, to finish the game, we pretty much have to play bullets twice. So, if I recall correctly, bullets deal 116 damage, and uh, since he had uh, 215 uh, health, I need uh, two sets of bullets. And once they arrive, it's gonna be just nice played. Like this, there we go, that's gonna be the game for you. Let's jump to game number three. And in this game, I'm gonna be actually covering uh, some cons of this deck. So basically, uh, uh, the biggest pro of this deck is that you can play a lot of cards and that will eventually like try to overwhelm your opponent. But uh, that's the biggest pro of this deck and a biggest con at the same time, because since you're optimizing around this one big push, First of all, your opponent's uh, game plan will be very simple to just prevent you from building this uh, one big push. And um, since your opponent, uh, since your opponent's uh, game plan will be very simple, oh, there, that was a very bugged steel hammer, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, since your opponent's game plan will be very simple. Uh, uh, you won't be having like uh, too much of opportunities to try to like outplay him or something like that. He's gonna be going for a uh, phone kick, which I think is actually a good thing. My steel hammer once again bugged. I don't know why this bug is still in the game. Basically, if a splash card tries to hit a card that is about to die and dies uh, while mid animation. Uh, the splash card won't deal any damage like you've seen once again the bomb skeleton killed the uh, skeleton before the steel hammer did and even though the steel hammer would have killed some skeletons with a splash damage uh, it didn't do it because the original skeleton died and the attack just got cancelled for whatever reason so yeah that's my daily rant right now now let's focus on playing the video game once again i'm gonna tank the viking tower just to assure Two blasters are gonna connect, and yeah, like I've said, the very first con of this deck will be that it's very clear what's uh, your plan to your opponent. So, if your opponent figures out that you're playing this type of deck, it's gonna be very easy for him to just control the pace of the game and never allow you to build this one big push. Another big con of this deck will be that uh, it's very hard to come back with and. Uh, 
It's actually a bigger problem that you think it would be because uh, with most decks, obviously, you kind of want to have a playing chances throughout the five uh, or four minute uh, time, and that's usually not possible with every single deck that is. Uh, my opponent will be playing Exclamatory, which is absolutely infuriating, and uh, like you've seen, <laughs> I've already got uh, a lot of damage already, so pretty much right now I have to come back and since I have to come back I have to build this one big push and since my opponent knows what deck I'm running He's gonna be trying to prevent me from building it, so I have said very tough situation also he's gonna be playing a T-Rex and a bomber man. I mean bomber Bomberman is uh, the card I have I'm playing bomb skeleton against it I don't think it's too bad of an idea. I'm gonna just force out him playing a bomb tower, obviously. I'm gonna play some stone phones on the opposite side and basically try to get some chip. I'm gonna force another card and basically, right now I'm definitely up mana, but uh, I don't know what I can do with this mana. I'm gonna just cycle steel hammer in the back and try to play with this advantage. Like I've said, my gameplay uh, is revolving around building one huge push, so I'm gonna just try to do this. Uh, he's gonna be playing a, a T-Rex, on which I'm gonna definitely play Bomberman and try to pretty much bridge him. Uh, he spent a 10 mana on this defense, while I've spent uh, a 9 mana on attack, so I'm definitely up from this interaction. Uh, and right now I think I'm gonna just play a bomb skill on the opposite side and if he goes for a cemetery I have some resources to defend that like I've said I've committed a 5 mana against his 7 like I've said building this mana advantage is very important because right now he kinda has to deal with this bomb skeleton and if he deals with it well uh, he kinda deserves to win that's why I uh, have some troubles with this type of deck so I'm gonna play Bone Blasters and instantly play Bullets. He plays Cyclone, which absolutely cleans everything, but at the same time, the Bomb Skeleton reaches the tower, which is absolutely huge. Absolutely massive connection, and right now, we pretty much have to hang on to this advantage, because I don't think we're getting any more damage throughout this game, and yeah, we instantly throw it away of the window, because... I didn't have too good of a responses and yeah, he's gonna play Bomber, which is absolutely fine response uh, to my Bomb Blasters. I'm gonna play Bullets because right now I pretty much have to hope that uh, that I'm not gonna die and I'm gonna be able to cycle to two more uh, sets of Bullets. I'm gonna play Archers just to defend the Cemetery. He's gonna play Poison or uh, Cyclone. He's gonna play Poison, which is absolutely fine. I'm gonna play Bullets just to cycle and right now he's on 71 HP which is so close yet so far. I'm gonna play Bomberman, I'm gonna cycle actually cheap cards, I realized that's gonna be a better idea. I'm gonna play some Stone Falls as well and my Bone Blasters will be uh, requesting a cycle so he doesn't uh, play a spell on offense and we actually get a win so very clutch win actually against lost control i didn't even realize a very good player uh, i think he's currently number one in the world and we get a win with a troll deck so definitely nice to see let's jump to the game number five and for the ending we're gonna get a game against chiva chai i think at this point it's just a tradition to get at least one game against Chiva Chai because he's a very active player and at the same, he's not like too bad, so I actually notice him while I'm playing my games. I'm gonna get a counter against this ghost, I'm gonna get some stone falls and he's gonna get a uh, twins right here going. I'm gonna play Bomb Skeleton just to get his piercing archer. He should be playing a Viking as always he does. So I'm gonna just pressure with Bone Blasters just to prevent him from playing it. And he actually tries uh, to defend with uh, other things. He spends 9 mana and he still will receive a Bomb Skeleton Bomb on his tower. So very good trade for me. I believe it would be way better for him to just play Viking, take deal on the Bomb Blasters and just um, don't care about it. But uh, yeah, we get away with a pretty nice counter push. Maybe he didn't even have a uh, Viking on hand, but like, I really don't believe that was the case. So I'm gonna just take it as a 
sign of good fortune and move on. He, I'm, I think I'm gonna actually fully counter this ghost, and if not, like, I don't really mind it, yeah, it, this ghost will get one shot, but like I've said, I really don't mind. Uh, he's gonna get probably a piercing archer against my, uh, against my steel hammer, so uh, have to defend with some heavy troops. Uh, He's gonna get a cyclone, which will mean that... Okay, his prisoner just doesn't lock onto my tower, which is absolutely perfect for me. And with that being said, we pretty much get away with the defense, even though we had to spend a bit on that. I don't think that was too bad of a deal. We're gonna play archers, pretty much try to counter his ghost. Always a good, good play to split the archers. I'm gonna play a steel hammer because I've seen that this play is kinda inconvenient for him. Uh, I'm gonna play just bomb blasters on the opposite side. I'm gonna play Bomberman. I'm gonna play Bomb Skeleton once again. I hope that he won't. Okay, he's gonna get a cyclone of his lifetime. And I think this piercing archer should be. Yeah, it it was for a second on tower, I believe. But at the same time, I'm getting a lot of damage on the opposite side, which is absolutely beautiful because obviously. Uh, the best way to play against a Viking Bird spam is to uh, counterplay them if they are trying to just stack and stack and stack. I'm gonna get one more. One more beautiful connection and I'm gonna whittle this. Uh, will this man down? Okay, this one man should be able to finish the piercing archer and that's absolutely it. I'm gonna play another Bomb Blaster just to split his forces. This one Bomb Blaster won't connect, but it doesn't really matter. He is not having a Viking cycle, so I'm gonna just play Bomb Skeleton. He plays Lightning, which I think is very aggressive, and I'm gonna try to capitalize on it. He plays Necromancer on my Stone Falls, but at the same time he has a huge push coming down on the, uh, on the right. I'm gonna play some defense right here. I'm gonna play some bullets to just prevent him from getting anything from the position. He actually gets a very nice ghost to just prevent me from walking into his department and absolutely slaughtering him because this bomb won't connect. But it's already a very bad position for him. I'm gonna just split archers. I think that's uh, a fair move to play in this position. I'm gonna split bomb blasters just to pressure both sides. And right now, since he played a viking on one side, I'm gonna just pressure his opposite side. I'm gonna just play some can for the defense. I'm gonna play some stone falls just to be safe. And that's gonna be GG's nice play because he wasn't able to generate the enough counterplay uh, in this game. So that was a very nice game against Jivache uh, to end this video on. Uh, one more thing I was about to uh, add about this deck is that it's very weak in like spell race. Obviously Jivache is running like three spells so his deck will be very good in spell race. But we didn't l ever lock the position, we were always keeping the tension. And uh, because of that, we're always able to get the damage on one or the other side. That was very nice uh, for us uh, to be doing. And that's why he wasn't able to just sit down, uh, sit back and uh, play spells. So uh, yeah, with, with all that being considered, I think the default deck is not like too good to play in any meta, honestly. But many players do. And if you want to, you can try it for fun, but uh, for better decks, I advise you to check uh, my other videos, which definitely uh, contain more competitive and uh, meta decks uh, for the time. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, definitely try to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you aren't already, because I post a quality boom arena videos every single day for you to learn new decks, learn new strategies, and uh, pretty much enjoy uh, some boom arena gameplay. So yeah, thanks for watching till the end. I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of Boom Arena.